great neighborhood, like good drive by real quick. I used to get in a lot of trouble when I was younger. Some girls that's around the neighborhood look at me and think that I gang gang. We're people. Just talk to us like you'll talk to us. Say hi or something. Yeah. Having a voice is a very powerful thing in this world, especially for our young women. Whether it's the East Side or you call it South Central or whatever you want to call it, and this is their home. Deborah Constance is the founder and creator of a place called home, and without her, 4,800 children would not have a place to come to and feel safe and um, build a future for themselves. We started a place called home in 1993, October 1993, and we started with about 12 kids in two rooms of a church about three blocks away from here. And I definitely had my own impression of what I was going to encounter and what I was going to see. And I can't say that it wasn't all true, but today, knowing so much more, I, I love this place. You know, it's, it's part of my heart as well. Our programs have expanded tremendously from a snack and a computer to uh, having a remarkable dance program. <laughs> incredible music program. What is your favorite thing to do here? Art. What kind of art? Um, I like to draw. draw drawing is one of my favorite hobbies. We have arts and crafts and we have just an area where the kids can come here and, and just kick back and play video games and sit around and talk to their friends. We have tutoring, we have counseling, we have um, amazing sports. And of course, mentoring. A place to home is a place to be! I'd have to say that the girls who walk through the doors of a place called home sometimes come here a little bit leery, a little bit untrusting, a little bit um, hardened by their environment, and uh, maybe some with some broken spirit as well. A place called home allowed me to just be me. I watched Monique grow up, and I can honestly say that. Monique was hard. Back then, I was a lot more withdrawn, and a place called home changed that a, a lot. Communication at I live. Our neighborhood is very misunderstood. Like everybody, when they see LA, they just make it seem like gangs are out here. These ghetto black kids out here shooting up everybody. These little vato Mexicans out here shooting up everybody, and it's not like that. You rarely hear about anything positive coming out of our neighborhoods, but there are lots of positive things and positive people, and I think our kids are, are beautiful. I wish I had had a place called home when I was growing up, because uh, being a, a kid nowadays is a really lonely place, I think. Last year, um, some girl tried to pull a knife on me because she thought I wanted to fight, but then I came up here and talked to a place called home about it, and I went to counseling and they helped me with my situation, so it was good. A lot of our uh, young women come here because their parents work and there's nobody at home, so they need a safe place to be after school. I like a place called home because this, it brightens the neighborhood and I think it's a good place for kids to go. It's a fun place, kind of like a big daycare center. <laughs> if you need a break pants, drop the kids off. <laughs> They'll have fun. We work mainly with African-American and Latina women, uh, young women. One huge issue that the Hispanic girls have are that their parents are very overbearing, and it's hard for them to find out who they are and what they want to do. The African-American girls, lots of times they're not raised by their father or their mother, and so there are issues of abandonment and, and it takes a while for them to, to know that you're not going to just disappear on me. <laughs> They're the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Some of the young people who attend a place called home will, on an average, go to 10 funerals a year. And that's not unheard of. That's, that's, that's pretty typical. The saddest thing for me was 
when my brother got killed. And I think if he was still alive, I wouldn't have a baby. I wouldn't have sex. <laughs> I would still be in regular school. I love my baby, but if I could like rewind, I wouldn't have had her. <laughs> Mentoring makes an impact on young people because it introduces a caring adult into their life who is not an authority figure. We match volunteers from the community to middle school kids. Uh, but the structure of the program stayed pretty much the same. It's after school, and we meet every other week for two hours for nine months and uh, do all group activities and one-on-one. -on -one. In terms of my mentee, I would say that um, our relationship has developed. He's become more comfortable. He's become more open. He's more interested in school to a certain degree. Um, it's just, you know, it's opening up a whole new sort of perspective for him. No one has told them you can be a movie star if that's what you want to be. You can be a singer. We have a lot of girls who like to dance. And it was, it's hard for them to believe that one day they could be on Broadway dancing and singing and, and acting. Things I've got to tell you. My dreams for every girl here at a place called home is for them to dream. That by you being in my life. In my heart, I really want to become a singer, but I know if that won't work out, I want to be a pediatrician and I want to go to USC. Home means a place of love and safety without judgment, where children can come here, be safe, be loved, and never be judged.